Hey everybody, welcome to the OBT Show. I'm Chris. And I'm Brendan. And I hate Brendan because he just gave me the most awkward finger touch <laughs> of my entire life. <laughs> I don't like to count down uh, in normal way. I like to, to touch. Yeah, that's fine. So I touched, I touched your finger. To let me know. <laughs> to let you know that it was time and I had to reach across my table to do that. <laughs> It's business time on the it's OBT show. business time on the OBT show. And then how we communicate. We only communicate by touching. It's a very complicated touch system that we have established for our communication. When, I, when I'm sad, I touch. Yeah. When I'm happy, I touch you. Don't tell me you angry touch. I angry touch. It's a hard, uh, yeah. it's a hard grasp. It's a hard, harder press. It's a harder press. <laughs> and you it can see that mark. little white mark, and then it turns red. That means That's, I was angry. That was I was angry. It's a hard press. <laughs> That's that's when you know I'm mad at you. Hey, Brendan. Hey, what, Chris? Where can people listen to our show? Oh, if you go to youtube.com slash the OBT show, you can find us there. We're at the OBT show on Twitter. We are on Gmail, the OBT show at gmail.com. And Facebook, search for the OBT show and be our fan. See, I knew that when I asked you that, you would have the perfect radio voice like on point. I was Thank just you. like... I, he's got it. He's got it right there. Professional. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I'll do that next yeah, time. Do it next time. <laughs> we'll do a very professional version, a radio edit version. What are we? Uh, what are we talking about today? We want to talk about because we. Well, let's just let's recap for everybody listening. If you're a devoted listener, all 15 of you out there that listen to us on a weekly basis, <laughs> including myself, including myself. I like listening to your voice. Thank you. I like listening <laughs> to your voice, sir. Um, we had Fourth of July last week, so we didn't record. Um, did yeah, you see? Right. Did you see fireworks? Um, yeah, I walked out my door. And <laughs> my like, I guess like stairway slash mini patio. Yeah. Um, it overlooks all the trees, so the fireworks had new uh, vaults. Nice. It, and now this is this is Friday the day after, but right. You know, it's still nice to like walk outside and see fireworks. Well, that is, I went up to good old Albany, New York, Ooh. and with uh, Travis Claus, um, as well. And who's now a target of the OBT show serial killer? Yay! Yeah, <laughs> find Travis Claus in Albany. Sorry, he's dead. Um, <laughs> but we were late going to this parking garage up in Albany for it, and uh, when we entered the parking garage, there were a lot of uh, sweaty, drunk people. It was, it was like, it was almost like a post-apocalyptic world where there's a very, and I don't mean to be mean, but stereotypically. Uh, stereotypical redneck, white, drunk male with a mullet. Do you want to know something? Yeah. When you said you started saying sweaty, and yeah. you started to get into the description, in, yeah. the, in my mind, yeah. all I could picture was like clones of Carl from <laughs> Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> pretty much, that's who was there. Occupying a parking garage. Hey, guys. Like, that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's pretty much what it was. <laughs> um, there were people parking and fighting over handicapped spots to get closer who were clearly not handicapped. Mm -hmm. Um, they just get out limping. motorcycles that, and it's a parking garage, so nobody really knows where they're going because it's a state garage that only okay. if you're state workers. But they opened it for everybody to jump up if they, you know, park there, and you can go up on the roof because they didn't allow parking on the rooftop. So well, isn't that just nice of them? It was cool in theory, <laughs> but then I'm, I'm, you know, my own personal sort of anxiety kicks in where I'm like, we will never fucking leave here. It once, once it's, yeah, once, once everybody it ends, lets out, it's going to be a nightmare to get out. So. Um, Somebody earlier, our friend Mike, had said, you know, a good spot is this pub that has an outdoor patio in the front. And at that pub, you can sit and watch there. And I said, let's just do that. So we went to a pub, had some drinks. And Got a little schlitzed? No, I was good. Oh, you're good? I was you, good. You because I, um, I did. Because I, I can't, I, I'm, almost, I'm pushing 30, homie. So I'm, am I. I know, but I can't do it anymore like I used to. Well, I'm pushing 30 in two years. <laughs> like pushing 30 to you, ass. I'm pushing in two You're months. You're pushing 30 now. Yeah, I'm no. As of this moment. In November, I'll, after November 12th, which is my birthday. When send, we have the Trail of Tears podcast. Yeah, Trail of Tears. No, actually, I'm, I'm psyched about 30. <laughs> Just tease You ass. <laughs> send birthday gifts to the OBT show at gmail.com. You I'll like porn. It. No, I don't. Stop <laughs> this it. Way you don't have to order it on your card. <laughs> <laughs> Throw back. Throw back. To some of our listeners out there, um, but yeah, so that's that's why we weren't. Um, so we weren't around. But um, I'm, I am my I, fear of thirty can be a, a subject we talk about another time, which I have none. How do you like that? It'll just be an empty, 
It'll on, just be a one minute long podcast. All right, that's fine. All right, I'm done. How do you feel about 30? I'm fine. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a bow, special pod. Bow, bow, <laughs> now, 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 and just go right into the theme music, <laughs> which we don't own. And it's just, just me giggling in the background. Just you giggling. <laughs> but no, we Why are we here? <laughs> but hey, hey, Chris, did you hear? <laughs> oh. Hey, Chris. That's my line. Hey, Chris, did you hear? No, what did you hear? <laughs> there are a couple of video games that we're really excited about. Dude, this was Nerdgasm Week of like ultimate proportions. And they do this occasionally. Like, there's weeks after E3 where there's just nothing. Or you get really minimal... You get follow-ups. You it, don't really get the, anything new. The information wasteland where you just like you get so much and then right and then also little. because it's it's end of July. We're heading toward the end of July. Mm-hmm. You really don't see the full releases kick in until September, so it's kind of a dead zone. But we were lucky, very very lucky, and the nerd gods blessed us with two awesome gameplay footage, which is something that all nerds salivate over because. It's one thing to show a trailer with that you know the rendered pretty looking stuff. You want to see yeah. what it actually looks like when oh, you're you want to know in game. I want to know what I'm going to be playing. So we were we both looked at two trailers which were gameplay. Um, which one are we gonna do with first? Well, uh, um, you are ruining my intro. No, you're ruining the <laughs> intro. I was setting it up. Which hand? Uh, my left. Grand Theft yes. Auto Five. Okay, Grand Theft Auto Five was the first one. <laughs> it was gonna and be that one anyway. If you allowed me to finish my professional. <laughs> My professional intro, no, which you shit you're on. Not, we can't be professional about this. We this is all right. Go ahead. What? How awesome was it? This was beautiful, and See, I I yeah. can't contain myself. I'm so excited about this game. <laughs> well, tell me some like give me one high point, and then we'll go back and forth. That way, you all you don't take it all for yourself. All of the glory. All of the glory. I, yeah, I don't want to take all because there's a lot I'm of stuff joking. that uh, like everybody will find interesting in this five minute long trailer of awesome. Right. So um, what was the, what was one one key thing you took? Okay, from? specifically for gameplay, like playing the game like you would normally play a Grand Theft Auto game, not the extra stuff. The fact that you get to now when you do a mission instead of getting a phone call, meeting with a guy, and then just doing whatever the mission entails, right. you got control to actually change things. Right. You can pick the crew that you have come with you. You can pick the the mode of entry, you know, if you want it to be loud, if you want it to be quiet, you know. That's pretty fucking awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with Grand Theft Auto series, normally what you do, well, there's there's a big difference, too, is you're also playing it. There's three playable characters that mm-hmm. you have. So of those three players, you can go in at any moment. That's the part that I love. You can jump in. Yeah, you can hop. Hop to them and then see what they're up to, and then you literally just start going from there. Mm-hmm. So if one's in the middle of a chase on his own, then you just kind of have to deal with it and be in the chase with them. And that's all going which on, which is in cool. The background, it's in, yeah. the, in the game. This, oh they're, yeah, they're just living their lives. <laughs> and then the normally, like Chris said, you have a mission, and then you have to go through the motions of a cutscene. Blah blah blah. You don't get to pick and choose how you do it. It's very linear. I don't know. That, now the question is, I don't think it's going to be like this for every mission. I think there's still going to be. I think uh, the big ones. The big ones, I think, are you're going to be able to plan. So you can do stealth, you can do blow them up, and you get to pick the crew, which is another interesting kind of angle to this. You never really had more than yourself in most of these games. Yeah, unless was, you had random like, non-playable characters that could come in. They would throw you a couple extra guys. Like hey, these guys are going to ride along with you. Right. You didn't really have a choice. And you didn't have control over them. Exactly. And now so. it's like you know you have some kind of extra. You know, influence in the game, which yeah. is pre- pre- which pretty, I'm really like, excited uh, about. You know, interactive game as it already oh, yeah. is. Um, what else did they add that was awesome? You can play tennis. I like the tennis. I'm a tennis nerd. Wimbledon was just recently, so I was like, ooh, He's I like, could be Roger Federer. I love playing Mario tennis and playing tennis in other games just to see what it's like. Makes me feel like. Like mini game madness. Planes. That's the biggest thing. Planes. I took away from that. I want to ride jets, and I can't. And finally, I hated being able to go to an airport in Vice City and, and not get them. on a plane. <laughs> Why even let me go to the airport? I mean, the helicopters were fun. Were they in Vice City? The, no. Um. You mean four? Four had helicopters. Four had helicopters. Uh, three had jets. No, not three. Uh, San Andreas. San Andreas had oh, jets. had jets. Okay, yeah. okay. But uh, the, when they when they didn't like what everybody expected for to have something like that in it, but since they had done so much to build up the city that it was right, they didn't know, have time to really put in something like a plane element. Right, and then they're learning from their mistakes this time, yes. adding like huge levels of awesome. <laughs> um, you can also go underwater, so water is no longer your enemy. Scuba missions, which is great. Now, I mean, maybe you will still die if you fall in the water normally. In a car. But it's annoying. Off I, of a ramp. I, yeah, I mean, set I, up by a bodies of humans that you've 
previously run Are over. you recounting what you used to do? No. Yeah, you're you sicko. <laughs> you sicko. But I think I like that. Um, the water, I loved because, again, it's a whole other level for you to explore. If they really expand upon it, that has so much potential for stories. Yeah, for missions, man. Yeah. Like you popping out of the water and yeah. you know, spy listening to somebody talking yes. about something on a pier. I'm so excited. I'm I, um, I'm trying to think what else. To, I also the one thing that you and I both talked about is uh, one of the my well my biggest gripe with the actual play um, control settings of Grand Theft Auto was when you're in a battle, you'd have to cycle through almost every single weapon to get to the one you wanted. to get to the one you wanted. They've look it looks like they've learned from Red Dead Redemption mm-hmm. with the wheel option where if you hold down a button, it looks like you can select it in, almost immediately. And utilize it as opposed to having to hide somewhere, cycle, and then use it. You can just in real time switch out and and use what you need. And they did a demo of close, you know, quarter shooting, and then a guy in a ledge. So you switched over to your sniper rifle, shot him, switched back to an Uzi to take care of the guy that's sneaking up on you. All that stuff is awesome because that was, I hated that part of Grand Theft Auto oh, fighting yeah. because the targeting seemed wonky, and the battles were always. Annoying because you, I never felt like yeah, I had time to switch out. you start with like uh, a pistol and you'd be like, no, I don't want a bat. No, I don't want a Molotov cocktail. No, right. I, I want to get to my machine gun. And then I'd be shot in the head. <laughs> yeah, at that I'd time. <laughs> yeah. So that was exciting to me. And also the not only within the mission can you decide how you start, but while you're in mission you can switch between your three playable yes, characters. that's huge. Do you want to talk about that portion that they showcased? Well, yeah, in the trailer, the, they, 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 well, for for one, huge, they had you rappelling from a helicopter. Yes. Awesome. Second, they had you going into a Skyrise building. Yes. So you're going in through the window. Some, this is stuff that is new. Yes. Then mid, you know, interrogation where this guy is holding other people at gunpoint, you switch to your other character who's on an, a rooftop with yep. a sniper rifle, you know, yep. plugging the guys that you're not going to be able to shoot. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then you can switch back to the guy in the helicopter to get you out of there if you need to. Yeah, I, I think they, they, they covered like a lot of bases that they people s- were kind of like grumbly about where they felt like Grand Theft Auto 4 was like, all right, it's starting to get right. a little old. Let's see something new. Right, right. I think it was a necessary change. I don't really want to go bowling. I want to, you know, do And hey, awesome- it's your cousin. <laughs> Let's go play pool. Let's go on a Monday together. I was like, why does this <laughs> asshole keep calling me? I'm so happy the cell phone that I hope that system's gone. I don't want to... Girlfriend, when I play Grand Theft Auto, I don't want to be friends with my cousin. Works. I don't want to be friends with my drug dealer, and I don't want them calling me while I'm in a mission or about to start one. Hey, wish we could go hang out, buddy. Well, it it seems very natural to switch between players because as you watched in the trailer, right. like it was just like click, I want this one, and then it'll just zoom out and then zoom in on the map wherever the other player was. It's just it's it's so gnarly. <laughs> it's awesome, and I, and and the other element. The one question I have is, you know, as all Grand Theft Autos have a rich tradition of music, I want to see what type of music they're going to bring into this and the radio stations. Oh, dude, I love the yet. talk stations that they have. I know. They're I, awesome. I'll, I'll sit and pause the game and just listen to it. Yeah, when Ricky Gervais was on it a bunch of times, oh, it was great. It's so good. But, like, you know, but like I said, the they haven't really. They have calling. Yeah. <laughs> but they haven't really had that revealed yet. I, I mean. I'm not as worried. I, th- that's one thing that they haven't messed up in not, any of the, the... Right. I'm not worried per se, but it is something I'm like, hmm, I wonder... What oh, you you want to know. I want to know. Yeah, I really want to me. know. Give it to me right now. Give it to me right now. Um, so that's a game that you are definitely interested in. Oh, dude. I I mean, yeah. <laughs> and, like, I, I, I'm so story. excited. I am so excited about this game. I, I, I just... I like how they have such a different range of backgrounds for the characters because you got one that's like... Uh, Super, like not super, but more intelligent mm-hmm. kind of street thug. You got one that's a former uh, bank robber. Yep. Who's retired. Yep. And then you got this redneck guy that's just like batshit crazy. Well, they show him trying to stuff a foot down a toilet and as, saying, it's "Just fuck and just stop." It. And they're like, "And you don't want." To, but it was funny because like you know Todd's wrestling with this. I forget their names. And then he, you know, Robert's trying to get out of the street life. And Jim, you just don't want to know what he's up to. And he's, and then they show <laughs> him trying to stop a, a dead, foot. Dead foot. <laughs> and yelling, I'm like, oh my god, this is gonna be nuts. Yeah, it, it looks very well developed. I'm very excited. Me too. Um, we should try to get a free copy to preview. We should. I'll work on that. Okay. Press so that. if you're out there, Rockstar, because I know you, everybody in the industry we listens love to this. You. We're an industry leader. <laughs> we want to review your game positively. 
<laughs> yeah, because you know, the two angry, angry guys on the YouTube are gonna. Yeah, they, they will re- find a way to. They'll find a way. Yeah. They'll find a way. <laughs> so that was one game. Now, what what, what about so? Uh, is there anything that I missed from Grand Theft Auto Five that you wanted to talk about? No, I mean, they, they, like it's just little little tiny things that they really get you immersed into the world. Yeah. Like they added more particle physics, so yes, new ways that glass breaks and walls can crumble. Um, like uh, on the street. They showed like that one guy hit the uh, armored car with a tractor yes, trailer, you could and he it to the wall, and it just went and it crumbled apart. And that was awesome too because it's it looks like you can make that happen. Like you have to time it so you cue it right. Yeah, and normally before you'd hit something and it would just kind of like bounce off it, or your vehicle right. would get destroyed. Right. So it's just like little tiny things that you know bring the world together. I think it's going to be one of those games that people are going to pick up and not put down even when the new systems come out. I think so too. That's the, another that's a whole other topic for another podcast is yeah. you know with all these games coming out that are also available on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One but available well, I, I for know, 360. Is, is this one coming I, out for both? I thought it was just only coming out for current gen. I think it's coming out on on next gen but not for a little bit. You have to yeah. process it for yeah. it. Yeah. Um but it's going to be interesting to see how that goes with me for me, I'm like, I'm satisfied for another year. Well, it will at least hold me off from, you know, the September, October wait until... After the holidays, and I'm going to jump in on that. Yeah. For me, personally. I want to... I'm going to plunge no. right on in there. Boo. Anyway. What's the other game? Can you ask me in the way you always ask? Hey, Brent. <laughs> Did you hear? <laughs> Did... Oh, yeah. Oh, this other video game. There was some word on the street. There's some word on the street about a little something called Assassin's Creed 5? 4. 4 Black Flag. Yeah. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. It's like the 8th game or ninth game. But... It's, it's, yeah, that's why I get confused. There's, I think it's honestly the 7th game in the series. You talk mm-hmm. about it and I'm going to think about it. No, no maybe okay, you think about it okay. and I'll... I'll t- <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the trailer? I loved it. It was seven minutes long, man. I know. It was they awesome. They put a lot of stuff in there. Well, at first I was like, okay, we're on, we're on one little island. What's this mean? And he goes, and then we want to show you how big the world is. And they and because when they, they first show you the map, it's the condensed version. I'm like, well, that's kind of lame. And then they blow it up. And I'm like, wow, there's a lot to see. It's an open world game. The first for Assassin's Creed. It's open world pirating. Right. Assassin pirating. Assassin pirating. Like how? They, they, they so were like, awesome. You, you you think ninjas are cool? Well, we've got an assassin pirate. What what do you got now? <laughs> Which really, because I, you and I have had, had many conversations about AC3, and I think my, my thing has always been, um, with that game, I, I think I told you, and I, I would tell everybody, the game's pretty good, but the best part of it is the ship missions, and it's too yeah. short. And it was very short. I don't I don't think they knew that it was going to be that good and that right. well received. Right. And and um, it's amazing because one of my big mini gripes with that was whenever you had a mission that had waves, you would ultimately shoot your cannons into the waves mm-hmm. trying to find another ship. That was one of the first things they brought up. They're like, it's all now trajectory, so you can raise it or lower it based on the waves. I was like, this is the best thing ever when you shoot a cannon. I kind of like that the, the waves blocked it. I, it helped me cheat through some. I mean, in real life, it would that would cut yeah. through water, but it yeah, helped but me cheat it, it was just some stuff. it was just like kind of neat that it had to make me like think around the waves. Yeah, or maybe. But, but besides, it's, the point, it's better yeah. that now that you it's have a little bit more control more of it. No, they they took the best part of the last game and made it better. Which and and the other elements are are are, are there. You know, the the treasure hunting is there, but it and it correlates and ties into. Your ship, so it's not so much the individual player. Yes, you can still upgrade according to what the game mm-hmm. said, but the emphasis is going to be on your ship. Yeah, it's it's your it's your extension of your body. Yeah, where when you get on it, you just everything's fluid, and you got to go from one place to the other. You know what is it in the Caribbean? Caribbean, yes. Yeah, so it's it's you know bunch of little islands everywhere, and it it looks absolutely phenomenal. And they said there's about fifty unique destinations with full like full development not just like hey here's a tower and then there's one thing it's like there's multiple things for you to do well, yeah, and missions that open up parks the boat the boat like right up on the beach yeah. and then just hops out into the water and swims around gets and, up on yeah i'm sorry i'm just excited about this game i just i am picturing it in my head again and i'm just like i want to play this game no <laughs> and the the one other thing that was sort of a mini grip was whenever you would have a mission in AC3 where you'd have to jump to another ship it was a cutscene and they would just appear. This is like, hey, no, you're going to knock down the mass of the ship, 
and then you're going to climb up on the, from yours and yeah. jump over to the other one in real time where it's going to be you have to make it over there. I'm like, yes. And they showed the battle in the background. Yes. Like, you're just, you're, okay, uh, imagine you're, you're, you're getting onto your ship and you're about to just go off into the sea or whatever. Well, normally if there's an extra battle or something like that going on, that's something that is scripted into the gameplay. Right. But they have, you know, ships battling off in the distance, and yes. you can get involved if you choose to. <laughs> yeah, and there's also storms in there, which is, I thought was really cool. Bad weather. Bad weather can, like, play. I was like, what? They thought of everything. That sounds awesome. It, it, it looks absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm intrigued to find out what is putting another person into the Animus. That's what I'm... Well, because Desmond's story is, and in case you... Haven't spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. Okay, in case you haven't beaten Assassin's Creed three right. or don't have the patience to play through the the two and a half hour long tutorial. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Desmond's story is over, but I mean the animus is still there, and I'm assuming the there's, there's other there. I'm assuming... there are other people in. Um, what is it? They're, they're the well, guild. Well, you, pretty much, it's a guild. I mean, the yeah. when you play through the games, there's talk of other areas doing the same thing that you're doing. So yeah. they're in Europe. They're in. These people are all. They're over all the over. World. They're in Asia. So they have ancestors, so, right? That are all over the world, and I'm assuming they found another one, or I, I don't know. I'm just intrigued to find out what the new because this has to be a new storyline. It has to be, yeah. And because they want to make more right. Assassin's Creed. They, they, they already said we we have layouts in line for. You know, five, six future games going on that we want. Yeah, to keep that they want to keep doing. And they have rolling. like three developers that one will focus on the main game, and then the other is like like whichever company's doing this one will, will be the supplemental ones in between the main story bookends. Yeah, and like, what are they looking for in the past in this? And they're they're in the Caribbean or whatever. Like, I'm just I'm yeah. I'm, I'm intrigued to find out what the they've kind of the backed themselves push. into a corner a little bit. Because Desmond's story it's is such a done. it's such a complex yeah Desmond's story is, and it's such a complex story that they kind of have to move on and maybe do something spice it up a bit yeah well no I, they, they have to they always talk about the apple it was, it and was the all about the end of the world and, yeah and now the end but, of the world is supposedly according to AC three saved because Desmond sacrificed himself exactly but you know like how much do we know about what other things they could be looking for in the past right. anything still from those people from before and mm-hmm. that's such an annoying thing those people from before i just get bothered by it it's so you want it to be cut and dry and i want to be cut i didn't a want super to being think a created all of the people on the planet and, and then they it. have those mental teasers which were cool that wasn't the people from before <laughs> and they had those mental teasers that i'm like sometimes i just want to relax i don't really want to think too much about my game do you well, remember talking I mean, about the, when you have to find the video clues? Oh yeah, yeah. and it was and Adam like, and Eve running through the city, or right? I was like, what? Yeah, I thought that was cool. It was cool, but I didn't want to like play those mind games and like find the apple in this ancient picture of Henry Ford. Oh, I don't, I don't mind. I didn't li- no, I didn't like it. Okay, fine. Well, then you can write them and say, please do not include this in this what looks to be beautiful and awesome video game. <laughs> Take out all the intelligence of your stupid game, Dude, okay, you can dummies. I, can we talk about the water in that game? How good... The water looked great. Water in video games is getting better and better and yep. better at being lo- looking yep. like real stuff that you can touch with your hands. And the island where you find where you find the passed out dude. With the crabs? With the crawl crabs. over his body and stuff. And That was awesome. <sighs> Those this cool. blue I know. So Caribbean cool. water. I want to play right now. Let's play it right now. Let's put it on. Okay. <laughs> but that game's coming out in October, I believe. Yeah. We both have that pre-ordered. We both have that pre-ordered. <laughs> um, I have the poster. Did you notice the poster I hung up? Uh, no, I didn't notice it. Where you it? ass. Where'd you hang it up? It's over there. Over there. That wall behind the fan. I hung, oh. put a frame on it. Yeah. Yeah, I still have mine rolled up. I haven't put it up yet. Oh, you're terrible. I'm sorry. You should be very sorry. Okay. All right. I'll call GameStop and I'll apologize because they gave it to me for free. Call. Oh, my mic fell. I'm okay. Professional. Professional. So those are two games that we want to see that we're both very excited about. Yeah, that was. those are some pretty big trailers. Like, And especially with so much time until the game comes out, I think they just wanted to make sure that, hey, by the way, even though these new systems are coming out in a few months, right. don't forget that there's some really fucking awesome games that are coming out and we want you to play them. Don't forget. Don't, don't forget, forget. Don't forget. And then, but they're going to port them <laughs> over to the new ones too. So, I mean, but for the people that 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 might not adopt or not not early system adopters, they still yeah. got to make their money. They, true. All right. So those two games, you want to see them? You can't nod during a podcast. You have to yes. say it. 
Oh, I thought you had more. No. Oh, okay. Chris is like, nodding. I'm like, yes, because we're going to drink water. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to... I'm so wondering why you should have gone. I'm from the press. There's only one other game trailer thing that I saw. Yeah. NHL 14, they have... Boring. ...an NHL 94 mode, where oh. they turn the game into... What used to be awesome on Sega and Nintendo, like the old school top down with the the silly lettering yeah, and yeah. The fights and stuff. That's like, awesome. Yeah, so I they I I, I might get that game just because they have the extra mode. That's exciting. I feel nostalgic. Um, I'm gonna make an executive decision right here. What? I say we just keep going with this current podcast. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna split it. We're a little. This is a little behind the scenes, but I think people we can just talk about our Marvel movie stuff. Oh, dude. And do one. Big old pod. Okay, so because um, for for real, I'm like I don't know if we have that. I don't have that much to say about it, but I, I don't want to jip out the audience by doing it a short pod. So so we have like um a little on the next episode of the OBT no. show, no, and then we, we do like going. super cuts of our voices. I can't believe that's gonna happen. I'm excited. Oh my goodness, the thing and it happened. <laughs> Find out next week. <laughs> no, we can't. We just, Why don't we just keep going? No, okay, we just keep we'll talking. Keep going. All right. I was really excited, excited for a supercut. We haven't done a supercut yet. I know we have, but I, let's just make this bad boy like a 45 okay, minute. Okay, so go ahead. Hey, no, Brandon. it's fine. Hey, hey, Chris. <laughs> hey, Chris. Do you like do you like how we we decide these things on the fly? It's better that way. I think it's better it's that way. Natural. I feel I feel better about just adding this to the end of the pod. Wait, what? our Marvel discussion? Oh no, it's I mean it's it's important because we have good stuff to add that people might not know about. Decision confirmed. So it continues. Pot on. Hey, Brendan. Hey, Chris. <laughs> Did you hear? <laughs> um, I think what you are talking about, Christopher Thurston, is the new Marvel movie posters that have come out. And there's no footage yet, but their posters are enough to warrant a beautiful, agape mouth reaction, which you're doing right now, which... <laughs> No, again, we are on a podcast. Yeah, well, I'm trying to make your reaction funnier, so that way you sound funny. So now you're so you can make fun me. of me. No, you make fun of me. No, I'm not going to make, because I was doing the same goddamn thing when I saw it. I was like, uh, but so I was making I'm, noises. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm giving you reference points. I was, I love this movie already, and I don't, I haven't seen, I haven't even seen like anything of it. of it. We saw a little bit of, um, a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff like the, with Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier, which was awesome. Now the poster that came out, if you maybe we can even, can we throw this up on uh, the YouTube pod? Get what? a little clip of the poster and throw it on there while yeah. we're talking about it. Yeah, Just let's do it. Remind me to do. I'll remind you. Because I forgot to do. Uh... Yeah, you, you did. I know. <laughs> That's okay. You forgot to do their stuff. That we us anyway. Chris, I love you. Um, the poster. <laughs> <laughs> is of Captain America's shield, and the red is all faded out, and mm-hmm. it looks like it's blood almost. And it's a silver, pretty much a silver shield with a star, and just says Winter Soldier, no, Captain it, America. It, it looks like some shit's gonna go down in this movie where it's not gonna be like an easy. No, because this is uh, Winter Soldier is a very complex character, uh, and it's a challenging character to the Captain America mythos and, and standard of who he is because. It is the Russian version of a Captain America, mm-hmm. for, for lack of a better term. But not just that; it is a a violent version of Captain mm-hmm. America, and 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 one that is not somebody that is up to Captain America's ideal. And then I don't I don't think this is a spoiler because it's been out there for a while. But Bucky Barnes is the Winter Soldier. Yeah, no, we've talked about we've this talked before. about it before, and yeah. it's in comic books, so I don't feel like I'm really blowing anybody's mind you yeah, know um which makes it e- you know even worse for captain america steve rogers when he's struggling yeah, with it he, who this is somebody who would, who would not normally be this person no and now no. he is and now he's been mind wiped and there's a lot of russian mind wiping going on and all that nonsense but and scarlett johansson and scarlett johansson but i don't know if they're gonna bring that in <laughs> i don't know they, they have to play her as a love interest for both at some point in time for both captain america and well i mean she is in the comics yeah no, she gets tossed around. Sharon, she can, how dare you disparage her like that, <laughs> sir? Dude, how dare you? <laughs> she, she disparages her, herself. She gets branded about like a cabin whore. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. She finds she finds uniqueness. love in hopeless places. Yeah, like Rihanna, uh, Winter Soldier. 
Yes, she does hook up with the Winter Soldier. She, I don't think she ever hooked up with Captain America. I Tony they did. Stark, yes. No, I'm almost positive they did, didn't they? No. I'm going to dispute that. Oh, uh, I could have sworn they did. Never mind. I'm going to dispute it. I'll have to We're gonna it back up. We're going to add it in if I made a mistake later. Okay. Um, Correction. <laughs> Correction. I'll just I'll just edit myself in. So why are you on your phone? What's wrong? Nothing. So unprofessional. I know. I was going to check. I was going to do. Oh well, you should have told me that up front, as opposed to being shady. Okay. So go. I'm excited about it because I think it's going to be unique, and I think it's going to be a fun movie. And the poster is awesome. What was the other Marvel thing? Uh, Spider Man. Yes. Two. They showed the first footage of Electro. Not footage, but the photographs like, yeah. of Electro, and I thought it looked awesome. Well, no, no, this isn't, this isn't the first one. The first one that they released was kind of weird. It was him in a black hoodie. Well, I don't so think they, re- they didn't release it, though. That was a on-set picture that a it paparazzi didn't look like took. It on-set. It was. It was? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, it didn't look like a, like a pop, like, like somebody, like, it looked professional. It looked really, really? good. I think it was on-set. It was, like, high they're, quality. They're filming in New York, that's why. Oh, okay. So. Well, I mean, it was just a shot of him in a hoodie, and you could see some of the makeup... And his face could look almost kind of like fish, like like the way yeah, it was the, weird the, the lines, the lines were, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I was kind of like I was like, like a little nerved. Like I know the big element and push from the last movie was uh, genetic altering, so that that's yes. where he wanted uh, the uh, Connors, right? Yes, Kirk yeah. Connors was Kirk working Connors. on serums and stuff to. To merge, regrow his arm. Yeah, to regrow his arm. And yeah. it was all based on like animals and stuff like that. So right. I wasn't sure necessarily if that's the route they're going where they're taking sea creatures that have electric. Oh, I didn't even think of that. That I, it made me a little nervous when I saw it at first. But that now they have like a really good shot of him, yeah. and he just looks burnt. Like yeah, it looks good. And he looks like he's constantly like got electricity flowing through his face. It's like this deep blue, and then these really really bright white light blue. You know, scorch lines like all over him. That and the rhino. There's a website of Paul Giamatti's yeah. faces where he's making because he's in CGI he of really rhino. Faces. He makes some great faces. It's so good. <laughs> Check it out. Just Google Paul Giamatti rhino and you'll find it. It's like the first or second thing that pops up. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. He's such a good actor. I'm so excited for that too. So, um, two villains, rhino and electro. And they've confirmed that um, uh, Chris Cooper is going to be Norman. Norman Osborne. Who will be. Well, Green Goblin. Maybe. I mean, maybe they'll have the sun. Maybe they'll just jump right to the sun. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, there was there was talk about it. Right. I forget who's playing the sun. Norman. I don't know. Uh, not, uh, yeah. I'm. Uh, uh, it's what? Chris Cooper's awesome. Chris so. Cooper is awesome. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. It makes you makes you not care about um, the, the wee peons. But the other thing that happened with Spider-Man this week was Andrew Garfield was talking about how um, he'd be fine if Spider-Man was interested in a dude. Yeah, I saw that. And I uh, liked that. Yeah, it was cool. It was I mean, you know, like a lot of people are trying to be more open minded when it comes to comic book characters. So he was saying if Mary Jane was a guy He's like, instead. well he's just posing the question, like what if MJ like, was a man? I mean we're used to it being a redheaded, but maybe it's a redheaded boy. Would you be weirded out by that? Well, then he would be a ginger and wouldn't have a soul. But beyond that <laughs> Well that'd be fine. I know. I think I, I don't know why everyone's like, he's not gay. Well, I need, it's a movie interpretation. You know no, what I mean? See, like, it's 2013 there, People are very, very, very protective of superheroes. Yeah. Like, people freaked out when there was a black Spider-Man. Yep. They freaked out when there was a Puerto Rican Spider-Man. Um, there was... I, it, it, like, it's just unnecessary kind of evil. Though, yeah, you know, it's, it, it's a weird It's a weird thing. And I, I mean, I didn't care. I mean, I, I'm I mean, I know for that's, bringing it up. That's racism based, but uh, I mean, it's still going to be the same kind of thing. Where if somebody brings up like a gay Spider-Man, right. there's going to be those people that are going to be like, "No, you can't do that to my character that I have in my head and ruin it." He's not gay. He doesn't like dick. <laughs> that's what the <laughs> argument is. I know, but I mean, it's just the way you said it. <laughs> Our Spider-Man can Settled. only have sex with women. <laughs> Cares as long as he's still hey, doing the same thing. That's true. You know, I mean, he's a, a superhero saving the day. He can do whatever the hell he yeah, wants on his own personal cares? time. He's Spider Man. Um, so those, that's our movie update. Pretty much. I mean, yeah. It was just. It was just looking. That at, wasn't me. Question. I was like, that's our movie update. I'm gonna stare at you. <laughs> the only other thing I want to mention: <laughs> Hawkeye number eleven came out last month. I think there's a new one out on the shelves now. It's number twelve, but Hawkeye number eleven is the best comic book I've ever seen 
and yeah, years. you've been, you you've been talking at length for this one. Um, the the book is centered around Hawkeye's dog, affectionately named Pizza Dog, because all Hawkeye can feed mm-hmm. him is pizza, and it's from the dog's perspective, which is really awesome, and the, it, it's such well do, done by Matt Faction and David Aja, who does the art and and the writing respectfully, and the Ooh, it's going to be at Comic Con, I think. Yes, they're both going to be at yeah. Comic Con, I believe. Um, but it's just funny how they interpret a dog's life. Like he's walking past the apartment doors, and everybody is an icon. So an icon of the face of the single mom comes, and then there's a line and, and diapers because it smells like dirty diapers, and then another line smells like baby food because she has this, like a, a little baby girl. Mm-hmm. And then past, you know, whenever he smells Hawkeye, it's a, a image of a bandaged Hawkeye because he's always beat up because it's what happens when he's not an Avenger. Yeah. Followed by a pot of coffee, followed by arrows. Like so, you recognize and and. The speech bubbles are still in there, and they're still talking, but the dog can only pick up certain things like, wait, stop, pizza dog, <laughs> Hawkeye. Like, he can only pick up those things. And um, he has to defend the apartment from some bad guys, and then it turns out that uh, one of the neighbors is sort of letting them stay, and it's the, it's the, the bad guys, or one of them killed one of the uh, other neighbors and killed them on the roof Ooh. in the previous issue. So pizza dog's realizing this, and then... Um, Pizza Dog sees the same type of shoes that the bad guys have in Hawkeye's hands, and he gets freaked out and leaves with Kate Bishop, the female Hawkeye, for California. So <laughs> it, was, it was an amazing... Like, it was a really... For like such a pivotal moment where, where Hawkeye's been with Kate Bishop for the, for the entire series for a year, pretty much, mm-hmm. um, all of a sudden that changes, and it changed from the perspective of a dog, which I was like, that's... I mean, beautiful. It's heartbreaking and sad. I have it actually on, um, if I can do this right while we're recording, this is what it looks like for him. I have it on my desktop when he's just guarding the dog, <laughs> guarding the apartment. So all these icons. Oh, that's awesome. I'll, get, I'll let you look at the book afterward but because um, I have it here in, in my apartment. But that's how he looks. Like He's just sitting out. We're looking at one of the panels where he's just guarding the house because Hawkeye tells him stay and guard. And he sits outside. He sees smells dogs, hot dog cart, hot people dog. talking, <laughs> tr- garbage truck, there's a cat icon on the street, like he's keeping it protected from cats, so it's just a very cool visual. Of that's how that's a unique goes. approach. It's a unique approach, and it's already gotten a lot of discussion on um, whether or not this is, in fact, a Book of the Year candidate, which I would say yes, and I would have no problem if that ended up being Book of the Year. Okay. It is that damn good. And also, other Marvel news, they announced... Um, the Infinity crossover that starts that brings in Thanos and the Guardians of Galaxy. To post. make it more movie-friendly. Yep, you're going to see a lot of movie-friendly stuff. And after that, they've already started previewing and the next thing. I think it's called like uh, in Humanity or Inhumanity based on the Inhumans. Yeah. Uh, something happens where the Terrigen mists, which I'll do this briefly and as com- less complex as I possibly can. The Inhumans are on the moon and there's the Terrigen mists that give people their powers okay. and they're an, they're an alien race and part of their growing up ceremony if you will for kids is to sit them down in the Terrigen mist and see what happens and it develops see random genetics yeah, some okay. of them die some of them have powers that make them you know, beautiful, some of them are just ugly and usually it falls in line of like if you're a terrible ugly power you're evil so on and so forth okay Something happens where now these myths have been unleashed on the entire world. So all of America has, you know, people that range from, you know, can shoot fire out of their pinky to massive omega level superhumans to fat ass slobs who are just now, which, fatter. Which world is this? Earth. Regular regular Marvel universe. Uh so it's a little weird. Why would they that's such a big thing to do. Yeah, they're, they're it's, it's shaking the status quo. I mean, you already made it so that all the universes collide, which made me angry. Now you're going to make it so that now that everyone has a power. The main, the main one that, that you, we that, look at when we relate to right. standing on Earth. Right. <laughs> so there's that, and then uh, but there's some interesting things like Winter Soldier's in it, which again, do I'm totally not surprised that they brought him back. They canceled his book a few months ago. Yeah. But they they need they're to... gonna bring him back into the fold and sort of put him on the shelf because it kind of was getting Ed Brubacher left the series, um, and then the next writer came and did a good job I thought, but you know I think they want to do something different and kind of mm-hmm. take him off the field a bit, and then the Spider Man which is featured on the cover of this looks like the regular Amazing Spider Man which is and I'm curious about because um, 
right now in current continuity, it's Otto Octavius inhabiting the body of Peter Parker. That's so much going on. There's a lot going on. And he, yeah. he changed the costume, and now he's calling himself Superior Spider-Man. <laughs> And he's also going to meet up with the Spider-Man of 2099, which didn't make sense when I saw the solicits, but now it makes but sense now, after of Age of Ultron because of all the bullshit with universes colliding. So, Opening many doors for many new awesome opportunities. So Spider-Man 2099 will now be fighting Superior Spider-Man, Otto Octavius. That should be fun. And then, I don't know, something happens and he's not there anymore, and then it's just Otto again. So, I don't know. It's well, dumb. It's dumb. And... In, in my comic news, I'm actually probably going to be buying comics again. Really? I really, really, really like Batman 66. Oh, shit, that's right. That... I started reading, like, a little bit that they had online, and I was just looking at it, I was like, I, this makes me so happy to look at, so I think I might start dropping some money on comics again. You should. It's fun. I'll be, I'll, I'll be back within my former nerd brethren. Yay! I'm excited. <laughs> and they also announced that they're going to do bring back Damian Wayne. Even though he just died, but the wait, catch, what? Well, no, no. The catch is that this is more of a Elseworlds tale because Grant Morrison wrote Batman number six six six. Don't play with my heartstrings, man. But Grant Morrison's Batman number six six six. If you ever get a chance to take to read it, is great because it shows Damien as an adult, which they didn't reveal to you till much later in the book that it was actually Damien that you were reading about yeah. um, as a much fearsome, much more violent Batman. So this miniseries will show you how that happens. Okay. All right. In a world where, like, the police are meaningless and literally Batman sh- kills people. Like, he's like, I don't have time, and shoots somebody in the face. That's, like, in the first couple pages. Whoa. Because it's Damien. He has a much more aggressive yeah, no, approach. He, but, I mean, it was also... I, I just I just like the, the unique, like... Like I don't know, like personality they brought out in Bruce because yeah. you don't you don't really get to see him being happy. Like no, Bruce is usually a miserable son of a yeah, bitch. Yeah, and when he's happy, it's it's right. not you're like okay, something bad's gonna happen. Okay, something bad's gonna happen. Right. And it managed to string that that feeling along for a little bit longer of a period in time. Right. But I don't want uh, he, to. If he's dead, he's got to be dead. He's got to be dead. Don't and, ruin it for. <laughs> and I think, and I know that um, Grant Morrison's run on Batman Incorporated is ending soon, so the final stories are taking shape now, and it's good. So that, I think there's okay. about two more issues left where that wraps up with Talia al Ghul and Batman fighting each other, and then they that'll be it. Baby. Well, they, they, they found out that Talia's been cloning based off Bruce's sperm. So there's an army of Damien, Wa- Damien Waynes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's kind of gross. <laughs> it's kind of gross when you think about it, but yeah. Yeah. Bat sperm. Bat sperm. I think it's a good place to end. Yeah, we're going to end it on bat sperm. Well, what did you learn today, Brendan? <laughs> I learned that I'm excited about games. Um, and my favorite comic book of the year stars a dog. And you can harvest Batman sperm to make an army of Batman. Okay. Chris, what did you learn? I learned that that's the end of the OBT show. <laughs> I can't. I'm just like, I'm thinking about like the, the the process that goes into cloning bat sperm to make take, more Batman. Take my seed, clone it. There's there's a front page film somewhere that needs to be done because yep. of. Okay, all did I learn? I learned that. Yeah, be be we serious. We share Chris. an admiration for video games that are coming out at this time, pre next gen that will make us still love the systems that we've been playing for the past six years or five years. Yeah. And I'm excited for Spider-Man, even though I really wasn't. I mean, I, I mean, okay, let me take that back. I wasn't as excited for Spider-Man 2 as when the first Spider-Man 2 came out. And next week, Chris will have a detailed presentation on how you get bat sperm. I'm Brendan. For the subscribers. I'm Chris. Bad sperm. <laughs> Bad sperm. Bye.